with you. Thank you very much. So it's going to be slow. Don't expect things to uh, pick up uh, or have high expectations, low expectations. I mean, I think that's the answer here. Thank you very much, Sanjay. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. By the way, the markets basically come back to the day's highest point, almost the day's highest point. The high today was made at 17,083, and we're about 10, 10 points short at 17,070. So this is the first move we've seen, 90-point move up at open, right after open, a 45, 50-point sell-off, and basically another 50-point move back up, all within the first 15 minutes of trade. Now that we have our first copper in the show as well. Well, let's uh, move on then. Uh, we have Uno Mindo. They have acquired a Kusai stake in the Indian joint ventures in a move to strengthen its four-wheel alloy business. The deal will uh, go through a composite scheme of merger through the share swap. To discuss this, and what are the benefits of this? Well, we're joined by Mr. Sunil Bora the group uh, chief financial officer. Hi, Mr. Bora, good morning. Always good speaking to you. Tell us first, what is the rationale yeah. for this particular move? Yeah, so uh, you know that uh, we had, uh, the board has actually approved acquisition of the remaining stake in Minda Kosai from our JV partner uh, in the last meeting. So Minda Kosai will get 100% uh, subsidiary by the end of uh, this month. Uh, that was the original anticipated. So we had another two legal entities uh, or two businesses with our joint venture partner, Kose. One was in the south, which was in the name of Kose Minda, which was primarily catering to the south-based customers like Toyota, Honda, Nissan, etc. And we had another JV, which was Kose Minda Mold, which was basically building uh, the molds or the specialized in building molds for the uh, two uh, four-wheeler uh, wheel segment. Now, with uh, Kose, uh, the MK transaction, obviously, the, we have been talking to our partner as to if we can simplify the structure by consolidating uh, the position. And they were also keen that uh, Minda takes uh, the control of uh, all the businesses, uh, considering okay. our performance in MKA. So both the three entities, which is Minda Kosai, Kosai Minda Aluminium, and Kosai Minda Mole, all three entities uh, we will be uh, acquiring and merging into Uno Minda Limited, and it will become the arm of uh, a division of Uno Minda. What it okay. will bring on table is definitely a lot of a cost synergies because you'll appreciate maintaining three legal entities, their compliances, management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there will be operational synergies and saving. Plus, uh, our South India plant, uh, we have always felt that there is a room to do better, and with it, it coming into Unominda fold, our endeavor is that uh, we should reach the KMA performance or the South plant also in line with uh, the North and. The way market is growing, we will need to maybe gradually increase our capacities in South as well to capture the growing demand. So overall, it will simplify the structure, bring a lot of synergies and bring a lot of advantages to the group in the growing four-wheel alloy wheel segment. Okay, could you quantify that, Mr. Bora, then? You know, as of now, uh, since it was in a JV, you all didn't have the entire control. Now, as you said, rationally, you're going in with this consolidation move. So one, how does it help in terms of growth? Do you believe that for this particular segment, growth will come at a faster clip? And if there are cost synergies, I mean, yeah. there would be some savings. Could you quantify yeah. that? Yeah, so in terms of saving, definitely you would uh, appreciate that having different businesses, having different procurement teams, different cost structures. So definitely once you consolidate everything, it will bring economies of scale in operations, in people, in resources, in procurement of RM. So. We are uh, working with our uh, teams once uh, we have already uh, the integration plan laid out. We will work on quantifying all those uh, benefits which we believe uh, should be meaningful for the merged uh, entity. And in terms of growth, we know that uh, in North plant, uh, you will appreciate we have been continuously expanding our capacities. But the South India plant for last uh, 10 years or so have not been having any meaningful expansion while the business has been uh, growing. So. We would endeavor to capture the lion's share or, or the major business in South as well. And that will also mean that gradually we increase our penetration in the uh, segment of the business in India. Hmm. <clears throat> Sunil, uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, in terms of uh, sort of getting technology from them, that uh, that continues. Will you have to sign new agreements in that regard? Uh, do the uh, sort of costs, etc., change there? Anything changes? So nothing changes. Only thing is that we had a joint venture agreement, so you have a technology partner. So instead of a JVA, now it is a technical licensing agreement. So entire all the contours of support or uh, the cost, etc., remains exactly same. There is no change in in that structure. Mm. 
All right, uh, let's talk about the entity then on the whole. You know, the good news for someone like you, Mr. Bora, is gas prices have cooled off, metal prices have cooled off as well. On the margin, that could be positive, right? Uh, I think earlier we were talking about margins of around 11 to around 12% for this fiscal. So there's a tailwind that's there uh, out for you. Operating leverage will play out, input cost is down as well. For the next year, do you believe margins will be better? Could you quantify it, say, around 13% or if you could give us a broadband? I'm sure you must be wondering why I'm, why I'm smiling. <laughs> no, so, I'm not okay. because I'm waiting for that number. <laughs> I'm hoping for that range, uh, Mr. Bora. I mean, it's a good scenario, right? When things uh, were a little bit uncomfortable, then it's difficult. But when things are good, uh, yeah. if you could give us a broad number that you're looking yeah. at. So I'll split that into two parts. Uh, so one was the pure commodity price softening. So if you remember, a couple of years back, we were battling uh, the front of commodity prices having steep increase. So what we have done over last uh, 24 months, now most of our commodity prices are almost uh, passed through to our customers. So prices up or down, it should have no impact on our margins. Only thing which you rightly mentioned was the gas, which you have been speaking in last uh, uh, few quarters, which has impacted negatively of mostly our casting operations where the gas consumption is high. And also in Europe where the energy prices are linked somewhere to the uh, gas prices, etc. So with softening, definitely it will bring in some breather in uh, Europe and also hopefully in Indian business also because we have also been talking to some of our customers, which are the larger customers of gas prices also getting indexed as we have some of the commodities like aluminum, copper, steel, etc., etc. So that discussion mm -hmm. is also going on with our customers. So if we are able to get through the gas price also indexed as normal commodity prices, then this will also be sort of a pass-through range. So. From that perspective, what it will do is, yes, it might not, uh, margin might not expand from 12, 13%, whatever you're talking, but it will bring in stability into our business, into our profitability. And whatever volatilities we are seeing, it's shifted uh, to our customers, right? So from that perspective, uh, we have guided last year also the range of 11 to 12%. And because of all this pressure, we have been actually at the lowest uh, end of the range, maybe around 11, 11 11.1% for last uh, nine months. So we do expect that uh, this range will a little bit maybe marginally improve, but still remain within the 11 to 12 percent range for uh, next year as well. Mm. <clears throat> Got that. I mean, uh, you had mentioned, uh, Sunil, that uh, you did not get hurt when uh, prices were rising. So you will not benefit that much also when prices uh, go down. Uh, so it right. should be a neutralish, uh, but more constructive kind of environment, as you put it. Uh, what's the latest in terms of customer addition, etc.? Uh, we had an auto analyst with us earlier who was uh, was not sounding too uh, bullish about sort of overall growth rates, etc. But that's an industry comment. What happens with individual companies depends on what their clients do. So tell us a little bit from the last time that we spoke with you, uh, what's been happening uh, in terms of uh, inquiries, uh, new orders, new additions, anything which has moved on those fronts. Yeah, so definitely we have been seeing a lot of traction with our customers. We have been securing a lot of businesses. And the way we see, we see our kit value uh, previous model to the new model facelift or a new model launch getting replaced. So we have generally been uh, observing our kit value or share of business improving a little bit across uh, all the businesses. That's number one. Number two, we have been getting a lot of businesses and that's why you see that today we have almost like nine expansions currently ongoing in various businesses, be it switching business, be it light business, be it wheel business, two-wheeler, four-wheeler, uh, then four-wheeler switch business. Most of the businesses we are expanding, that is primarily to, to cater to this increased demand. So we have been very, very optimistic. And while, yes, you are right, industry might uh, be not uh, in our hands to comment. So we don't normally comment on the volumes. But if you see four years back, where the industry was to today, we know that uh, one segment, which is two wheeler, definitely uh, we are seeing that challenges in terms of volumes, not uh, sort of uh, picking up. Volumes are much lower than what they were pre COVID. And even in the uh, past cars, things are better, but now it's getting a little stable. But if you see from Uno Minda perspective, we were like 6,000 crore top line odd uh, four years back. Today, we are at 10,500 crore kind of a, a run rate in this year. So while industry has remained flattish to negative, we have actually been able to almost double our, our revenues. And that momentum which we, uh, we have built, uh, we expect to continue. And our guidance has consistently mm. been whatever industry grows, we should grow at least 1.5x. And we are definitely on that path. And if you see last, Four years, we actually delivered better than that mm. uh, guidance. Okay, uh, so what is your estimate for the industry? What is it likely so to grow at? Yeah. That's what I said. We normally don't uh, comment uh, on behalf of our customers because uh, OEM sales or our customer sales is not in our hand. What is in our hand is 
how much value addition can I do? How much premiumization I can do? How much kit value I can improve? How can mm -hmm. I provide more features with the same cost or marginally better mm -hmm. cost? So we could talk about things which are control value. Normally, don't talk about things which are uh, not controllable. All so right, we'll Mr. Just, Mr. Mr. Boda, just one point. You said ten, ten and a half thousand crores. Or I think you will beat that by a mile because you're already at around eight thousand four hundred crores, and you're going at a run rate of around three thousand crores. And when we chatted last, you said that quarter th four will either be as good or a little bit better than quarter three. So just mathematically, you'll at least send at around 11,300 to around 11,500 crores. Mathematically. Isn't that correct? You're right. You're right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sunil, so, sorry, I picked up uh, you mentioning passenger, you said two-wheeler sales, of course, are struggling. Uh, they're below pre-COVID levels. You said passenger cars, there is some softness emerging. Uh, is that what, is that, you, right? I said is that what you're saying? The numbers are uh, stabilizing now. But we had okay. seen a good run-up in the last uh, few months. So current, uh, whatever indents we are seeing from customer, they are marginally better, not uh, at the at the pace which were, but the numbers are still better than what they were in the previous months. Okay, all right. Maybe stabilizing at a slightly uh, lower level uh, from what we were seeing a little earlier. Thank you very much, Sunil. Great to have you with us here. Thank you very much Thank for you. your time. Appreciate it. Uh, your uh, comments on CNBC TV 18. We'll take a very quick break here with news that the market is up uh, 50 points. So, oh, I mean, you know, 90 up, 50 down, 50 up, 50 down again. So 17,035, 17, huge volatility uh, with just, what, 40 minutes of trade behind us. We are back with George Alexander Muthurt of Muthurt Finance. Uh, he's going to talk to us about demand trends. Gold prices are seeing some solid trends recently. Uh, they've gotten past some resistances, etc. So that conversation you don't want to miss. A little later after that, we'll have our special segment, Charting Trends. Midesh helps us decode charts in a slightly a medium to longish perspective. Stay with us.